name is Fila Beck, and you are a rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And I found uh, I found something magical and wonderful the other day. Magical, wonderful. What could it be? Was it a unicorn? No, no, it wasn't a unicorn. What it was is a uh, uh, an untapped st uh, seam of uh, uh, Doctor Who stupidity, uh, which I just adore, right? You know. I essentially have a Doctor Who channel, right? I, I talk about other stuff, but it's essentially a Doctor Who channel. And uh, a bit tough to have a Doctor Who channel because there's no Doctor Who and nobody talks about Doctor Who. you got to hunt and hunt and hunt for stuff. I found them talking about Doctor Who, not only talking about Doctor Who, talking about the worst Doctor Who of all time. The worst Doctor Who of all time. Uh, 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 and there's just, there's lots of it there. It seems to be an inexhaustible supply. So we're going to be looking at BBC America uh, article, Doctor Who, 10 things you might not know about Orphan 55. But one thing you might not know, uh, BBC America, about Orphan 55 is, I am a massive Doctor Who fan. Like, I, okay, look, uh, exhibit A, look behind me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, 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 this is real. This is not green screen. I didn't put this on. This is who I am. This is my life. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm a massive Doctor Who fan. And uh, 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 the only time I ever seriously considered stopping watching Doctor Who, and I was actually going to do it if it wasn't for this channel, uh, was Orphan 55. Orphan 55 was the site, because hit. Basically, my journey was this. Uh, uh, season 11 was terrible, right? Absolutely terrible. Uh, in that, it was just boring more than anything else. It didn't... I mean, it was preachy. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jodie Willis, Doctor Who, was an idiot who lectured you all the time. Uh, um, but more than anything else, it was just boring and dull and no, no monsters, no villains. So when, you know, uh, uh, season 12 came around, I, I had... I wanted to go into it with an open mind, right? I wanted to go into it. I wanted to like it. I still wanted to like it. Uh, so I said, maybe, maybe they'd come around, maybe they saw their reaction there, and I saw they're adding in, like, Sash the One, and the rumor was he was a master, and they had monsters coming out there. Maybe, maybe they've uh, worked it out, right? Maybe they turned it around. Um, so I, I saw Spy for it, and you know, the problem with it is Jodie Whittaker. She's just useless. So she's, I mean, uh, she has a confrontation with uh, confrontation with L Lenny Henry, and, and, and she's just so unintimidating she's the opposite of intimidating when she was riding the bike like everything she's just useless I mean, and she's so bad it detracts from how bad the scripts are which were unbelievably bad but at least it was trying to be doctor who right i think uh, uh, uh spyfall was trying to be doctor who, and it had a clever name as well right uh, uh, and then orphan 55 came which was the uh, uh, uh third episode and they double triple quadrupled down on it being Awful, being preachy, uh, finger wabbit wagging Gre Greta Greta Thunberg in space, right? Uh, if you like Greta Thunberg, very good. I think she is a uh, uh, a child. With, well, she's still like she's eighteen now, but with uh, uh, significant significant uh, 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 psychological problems. Uh, that's what that's what it's called. It's called when somebody gets uh, uh, somebody sometimes gets uh, temporary muteness. You know that's not a sign that you you have mental uh, uh, strong mental health, right? Even I I I've never been struck with temporary muteness. <laughs> Uh, uh, fine. So the, yeah, the, this was the episode that absolutely broke me. It, I, I, like I'm such a Doctor Who fan. I'm such a Doctor Who fan, uh, and I suffered that. But, uh, but I only for the channel, I continued, and I wish I didn't because it was awful. I'm going to do season thirteen for you guys because I don't know why not. <laughs> it's, 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 it's what I do, I guess. Uh, 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 but thankfully, I think it's only going to be six episodes. Oh, that ten episodes last year was just agony absolute agony anyway before we get into it can you hit the like button thank you very much to the fan debbie double dozy uh can you hit the share button that's also also fan freaking fantastic thank you very much uh mostly hit the subscribe button hit the subscribe button day i'm i'm at uh 3075 uh subscribers which is surprised me i was stuck at 3060 for a long time so uh, get me to 3080 that'll be oh listen this i'm filming this on thursday i'm gonna probably be posting this on Saturday, because Saturday, uh, uh, firstly, I'm, I'm offline, but Saturday night starts this really big Jewish day of mourning, 25 hours uh, of, uh, you don't eat, don't eat or don't drink, and, you know, you do all these sad prayers, and blah, whatever, whatever. I'm not going to be streaming. I normally stream Saturday night. I'm not streaming, uh, 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 so I am making content now. Who knows what it's going to be by the time you say it? It'll probably be back down to, like, uh, 
12. <laughs> God, I hope not. Uh, uh, five. So, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, uh, I think you're going uh, you know, to tell me you think this is crap. And I'm going to say, I think you're right, mate. I think you're right. And mostly go check out my Indiegogo. Uh, uh, again, we are ooh, over here. Over here. We are in the... Uh, um, uh, uh, we're, in, we're in the trench run. We're in the trench run to finish. Well, we're about to enter the trench run. I got a few shows booked up already for next week. Uh, uh, we've uh, locked S Foils into attack position, and we are getting ready to finish this campaign. Uh, I really want it going to print this month. Okay, I want this going to print this month, and then moving on with life because I got another campaign I want to do. Uh, what is it? Two freaking awesome ca uh, uh, comic books. You got uh, biblical Bible stories, atheist creations, rationalists, and rogues. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, very biblically accurate, but I think not preach at all and what i think is kind of important because i wrote and drew it you know and i just think what i think is important in general because i'm a massive narcissist right so there's that one 220 pages long freaking awesome and this one i wrote uh the imperium uh art by the fantastic dominic rancho uh uh, uh absolutely fa uh, fantastic so imagine uh james bond emma pill doctor who a monkey in the space and the black slab from 2001 all in one, fantabulous super group. Uh, 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 you got a bit of Prisoner, a bit of Thunderbirds thrown in. So anyway, yeah, I'm wrapping this up soon. If you're considering go, uh, 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 going to buy it, that's great. I'm nearly at eight grand. When I hit eight grand, this pinup uh, uh, becomes a poster, becomes an A2 poster. And I think I might throw in some more posters as well, either... Uh, this one, uh, be human in time and space, or this one, the eyes have it. Uh, 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 yeah, who knows? Who knows? Or death stream, what may happen? Fine. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at this article. Biddy! Every time I say it, I just I, I can't stop saying Biddy! Biddy! It, like it's automatic. Every time I see this crap monster, it's like I, okay. By the town I live in, there's a place called uh, uh, Alfe Menasha. Uh, uh, whenever I go past, I see the street sign, and I don't drive. Uh, uh, my wife is useless now; she drives. I, I can't not say it. I go, Alfie. Like, every time I say, yeah, Alfie, but like, Alfie. Why? Because that's how uh, how they used to call uh, uh, Alfie Moon in EastEnders. Alfie. Uh, uh, yeah. So I'm saying, I go, Biddy, Biddy. Oh God, it's so bad. Okay. Ten things you may not know about Orphan Fifty Five. I, I can. You know what? I never thought to ask. <laughs> All than 55 wears its social conscience on its sleeve. Yes, because they're so virtuous. Oh, they're so virtuous, and they want you to know how virtuous they are, and they just want to really be virtuous like them. Oh, so much virtue. Um, you can read it as a critique on capitalism, what the, 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 the system by which you made your TV show and, and you get overpaid by, uh, uh, a, a stark warning event against climate change, uh, and or parable about the ever-changing nature of evolution. Uh, not so much. I think... Uh, 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 was it climate change? It's also a story about not leaving things to the last minute, in which uh, in which two fractured families are healed by their experience of fighting off the dregs. And uh, yeah, I didn't notice any of this because I was just like in too much pain. You know, I saw uh, uh, Ryan suck his thumb, and it was just it was too much. It was too much. It really was. Oh man! And in one uh, in which one couple. Pays the ultimate price. Listen, we're the ones who pay the ultimate bloody price for watching this. I mean, yes, we are the ones who pay the ultimate price. Here are a few things to keep your eye out for uh, the next time you watch. I am never watching this again. Okay? I am never, ever, ever watching this again. Uh, number one. <laughs> this is not the only story featuring the Doctor on holiday. Really? Like, like half of them are like, oh, Leela, let's go for a holiday. Ramana, let's go for a holiday. Uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, I... Every doctor goes on holiday. I mean, what? I, I, don't you remember uh, uh, Death of the Daleks? You got uh, John Putty. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Uh, 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 and Sarah Jane looking quite, quite dishy in her uh, 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 very, very, uh, 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 what's it, a very modest bathing suit. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, they, they all went on bloody holiday. Have you never seen this show? Freaking morons. Uh! Anyway, <laughs> I got, I'm, about, I'm about three lines in. Uh, 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 <laughs> this, is only, this is not the only story. Can I do this? As a, this is not the only story that features a doctor in a holiday resort uh, with, a, with a troubling background. Okay, so now you've got a little bit more specific. Um, but a good, a good story that never got made. Big finish to it is Paradise Five, which is the Doctor in a, in a holiday resort with a, uh, a troubled background, written by 
uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Peter Hammond, who did Saffron Steel and uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, or Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes, I think. Yeah, I think that's Peter Hammond. Uh, Dublin background. Uh, and it's not that, uh, you know, I should just get a few of these facts wrong because everybody will always correct me. And, the, and, and look, the algorithm does like your comments, okay? The comments, the comments work out well for me. Uh, did, uh, apparently, oh, I think I can't believe it. They're about to mention it. Okay, fine. Uh, and it's not the first one of which that uh, ends with a number. The Sixth Doctor investigate uh, par uh, a paradise with a dark uh, secret on the audio drama Paradise Five. Uh, listen, I give you a much better uh, uh, background to it. And the Tenth Doctor took Martha to a ski resort with a global warming uh, uh, with a global warming problem in the audio drama Snow Globe Twelve. That was an audio drama. That was a book on tape. Uh, that's really that's the entire number one. The doctor's been a holiday before. Really, wow, wow. Thanks for letting us know. Okay, wow. What would I do without the sparkling commentary? Uh, this episode's guest comedian is James Barkley. This episode's guest comedian is uh, well, his resident comedian is uh, uh, Chris Bloody Chibnall. Uh, uh, oh, he's not that funny. Best known as unrepeatable turn as the cocksure Jay in the sitcom The In Us. When asked by Doctor Who TV about a decision to take on the part of the bumbling mechanic Nevi, uh, he replied, it will, he was partly inspired by the strength of Doctor Who fandom. Yeah, that's why you said yes, because you know people like Doctor Who. They hired you before season 11 came out, and uh, they had this, like, impenetrable wall of bullcrap, saying that anybody didn't like it just, cause, just because they were a, a, a racist and a sexist or whatever. No, okay, okay, uh, what's his bloody name? James, James, mate, James, mate. They hate white men. And whenever you see white men, white, normal, heterosexual, cis, whatever you want to call it, white men, they always make them look stupid. And that's what you are, right? That's exactly what you did. Um, it's a real honor. The viewers who watch the show and how passionate the, uh, the fans are uh, behind the show. What would you say that, mate? Um, is one of the reasons I want to do it. Uh, I want to be involved in things that people support, uh, like the support teams. Well, we, 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 yes, that's pretty fair. Where something is so loved by so many people, really huge fans taking uh, the word fan uh, back to its actual meaning, fanatical. Yeah, that's me. That's me. And your, your turgid episode, your piece of crap episode, broke me as a fan. Okay, yeah. So thank you for taking the role on. Uh, we are treated to some very choice British slang moments for, uh, uh, and for once it's not just Graham spouting off. Yes, describes the doctor as being in a mardy mood. Okay. This isn't hidden. I remember that. Uh, mostly affectionate term, which means, uh, the same as moody. It's a term that's very much associated with Sheffield, uh, since the likes of Arctic Monkey released their celebrated song, uh, uh, of Love Gonna Rye. Mardi Bum. Okay. Um, number four. Well, okay. So far, we haven't got to anything, right? Number four. Not that Graham is entirely unrepresented in the slang area. His delightful, uh, his delight at scoring a free holiday is expressed in his, uh, in his most fully and thrilled get in. Uh, this uh, celebrity expected uh, with a wealth of potential uses. It, uh, it's likely to have derived from... Sp <laughs> Jesus, really? We're doing the etymology of the word get in, of the expression get in. Uh, think of a soccer ball heading towards a goal, uh, 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 although the OED can find citations that link the term uh, with success as far back as 1350. You're right, I didn't know this. I didn't know this, and, and I'm struggling to stay awake, okay? <laughs> You're like, there's a reason I didn't know this. It's boring as hell, right? That's a, which kind of like Doctor Who. Um, uh, Chambers slang dictionary noting get in there as being a general uh, uh, explosion of delight in uh, the 1920s, most uh, notably aimed at a young man who, uh, uh, who have watched him succeed in a date. Yeah, get in there, I think, is re referring to putting his penis into her vagina. And yes, I did. Uh, it's the 1920s, so I was able to uh, assume the gender, right? Because we live in strange times. We live in strange times. Let's just leave it at that. The design of the dregs went through a series of concepts until they stole it from uh, uh, a, uh, an image bank, which I showed. I was on Noel's channel at the time. 
uh, uh, totally stole it from them. Designs of the Drakes went through a series of iterations as real by designer Javier or Javier uh, uh, Alija on inst in an Instagram post. The original model for the Alpha Drake revealed uh, more flayed and leathery look and less sinewy with the extension extensively remodeled uh, head and face with purple veins instead uh, uh, instead of a body redness. Whatever. Okay. Uh, so there we The thing we might not know is they don't take the first draft of everything. Uh, uh, the script, yes. They only get the first draft of the script. That's good. We're done. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, maybe we have to do two or three. The story was filmed in Tenerife. Oh, wow. What a waste that was. I think the last... Didn't they film uh, Planet of Fire in Tenerife? Was that Lanzarote? Uh, they're right next to each other. Uh, the story was filmed in Tenerife, which is out given that it was a popular, uh, uh, popular holiday destination. And they made it look like garbage. It, was, it just looked like... Ooh. Um, especially with uh, British tourists, to get the landscape and the climate of a destroyed planet, the crew set up on the slopes of Mount Tide, uh, an active volcano. Okay. Fine. Actually, I knew that as well. Uh, the story's original big moment was a uh, big moment of interstellar casting came with... Uh, no, the story's other big moment of interstellar casting came with Laura Fraser of Breaking Bad uh, um, Better Call Saul. Who was that? Who, well, she was a Breaking Bad letter called Saul, uh, uh, Better Call Saul, and a host of top notch British TV drama, The Missing Lip Service, Neverwhere, also starring Peter Capaldi. He was in Neverwhere? Really? Wow, I like Peter Capaldi. And of course, the role she had probably, uh, 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 she, uh, she had, uh, uh, which is probably most of note to Whovians, was that uh, Henry, uh, was it Henry in David Tennant's Unrequited Love, uh, David Tennant's Unrequited Love in Casanova. Wow, I had no idea that she was in uh, 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 Breaking Bad. You know, I gotta like, I gotta look up see who she was. Um, the doctor, uh, wait, the doctor does seem to be particularly adept at discovering, uh, un uh, uh, discovering unsettling or un disco uh, discovering upsetting, ah, upsetting potential future timelines for Earth. The third doctor discovered an alternate future in which the Daleks invaded. Uh, Dare the Daleks? Uh, I, by the way. I'm really looking forward to that season being released on Blu-ray because I love the special edition of Dare the Daleks. It's so good. It's so good and I think better than the original. I really love it. Mind you, I like special edition of Planet of Fire as well, for that matter. <laughs> you know, none so queer as folk, I, I guess is what you have to say. Uh, the Fourth Doctor revealed a, uh, a version of the uh, a version of 1980 uh, in which the very far future, uh, the, in, in the very far future at that point, about 100 years, in which Earth was destroyed and a dead planet pyramid as well. The Sixth Doctor discovered a, ru a ruined planet as a future version of our home in which had been moved for the time was renamed Ravalox, Mysterious Planet. The Seventh Doctor met herbivores who evolved after uh, Earth was overwhelmed by pop uh, uh, pollution. See, that one, that's a story that uh, that deals with the uh, uh, environment. So many stories deal with the environment without them going, Look at me! I'm so virtuous! Look at me! Which is what they scream. They're basically, they're, that's what they were doing that all through when they go, Biddy! Biddy! Um... Uh, 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 and there, uh, uh, well, uh, well, the seventh Doctor home of the uh, by pollution, uh, and there's the Earth, the tenth Doctor and Martha discover where Captain Jack Harness jumped aboard the disappearing TARDIS, the dystopia, few, uh, dystopia at the end of the universe, the sound of drums. I thought that that was an alternative. I thought that was the future, wasn't it? I don't know. Um, this is definitely going to stick in the mind next time you watch the dread costume lifts. So little chance for performers inside to breathe. Uh, that fresh air had to be pumped into the mud. It's kind of normal. I've seen a billion makings of where they got like hair dryers putting cold air into the mask. You know, have you? I've seen all this stuff before. Uh, uh, pumped into the mask in between, uh, uh, in between shops, maybe shots, maybe shots, uh, maybe in between the shops too. Hey, I, I'm just, got, I'm just to be down to Tesco, but you're in, you're in your drag costume. Yeah, can you give me some air? Okay, uh, as director of photography Edmore revealed in an Instagram post, well, if it's agreed, agreed, revealed in an Instagram post, then it must be real. Yeah, look, look, we've all seen this a million times before. 
he said, although they're obviously apex predators, as your average Drake does it, uh, does struggle a bit for fresh air. Fortunately, the, uh, the costume pump is on hand with a little, little battery-powered uh, blower to keep uh, keep them going. Oh, you mean they're not just going to let them die? Oh, well, that's nice, then. That's nice, then. That's good, that's good. Uh, uh, what wonderful people. Number 10. We are treated to an uncelebrated Doctor Who cat trace in the episode. The sentence, when I say run, run, was a particular favourite of the Seventh Doctor, but it uh, cropped up a few times over the years. Castro, uh, Castro Velvet, Sleep No More, Kill the Moon, or oh, blimey. Yeah, but they're mentioning two stories that make, make you want to tear your head off at, at the same time. Uh, as you may expect, it appears a lot in the supercut. And that is it. That is it. Ten things that you never knew about Open 55 uh, uh, and ten things you don't care about Open 55. It's bollocks, mate. It's absolute bollocks. Don't bother with it. Uh, 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 listen, I, it depends. It depends. If you are, uh, uh, you know, if you want to lose the will to live, this might be the, the episode for you. Right? Uh, only if you like Doctor Who. If you hate Doctor Who, this is going to make you really happy. Right, this is going to make you really happy. I think the next one of these we're going to do has to be about Can You Hear Me? Right, <laughs> Can You Hear Me? That was one of the worst episodes of all time. I and mean, they just kept getting worse and worse and worse, didn't they? Anyway, my name is Sula Beck. And you are I from another planet. Please like, share and subscribe and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop.